The fast-moving world of TV production is chaotic and unpredictable, and with so many plates spinning in the air, members of an ensemble cast can't ever be sure how long a gig will last. Generally speaking, a recurring part on a TV show is a dream job for most actors, and so the fear of losing a lucrative role on a major series is understandable. Now, these 10 actors, all of whom played major memorable characters on hit TV shows, all feared at one point or another that they would end up getting the chop. Perhaps a production miscommunication put them in the firing line, they made a huge mistake on their first day on set, or simply lacked the self-confidence to appreciate the great work they were doing. But of course, as it turned out, none of these actors were in fact dismissed from their jobs, going on to complete their work and in some instances even doing well enough that their role was expanded. Though Hollywood is a tough, ruthless place to work, these actors at least eventually found out their crippling fear and anxiety was ultimately unwarranted. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 times TV actors thought they would be fired for sure. Number 10. Paget Brewster in Friends Paget Brewster memorably appeared in six episodes of Friends' fourth season as a love interest of both Chandler and Joey. However, in a recent interview with ComingSoon.net, Brewster admitted that she expected to be canned from the role before she'd even shot a single scene due to a hair-related miscommunication while getting ready to film her part. During rehearsal, Brewster went to have her hair styled by the show's hairdresser, who took her black short bob with bangs, cut it short, and then dyed it red. According to Brewster, producer Kevin Bright was incensed by this, shouting that he hired Brewster for her black hair. At which point, Brewster went to her dressing room and packed up her belongings, believing she would be fired over somebody else's misunderstanding. Bright then went to her dressing room and assured Brewster both that he didn't hire her simply for her black hair and that she wasn't fired. After Brewster confirmed she herself was happy with the red hairdo, it was retained as a defining part of the character's look. Speaking of the incident now, Brewster called it a bad few minutes when when I thought I was going to get fired from Friends. Number 9. Michael Imperioli in The Sopranos Michael Imperioli played Tony Soprano's protege Christopher Moltisanti on The Sopranos, though on his very first day of shooting, feared he would be let go after a blatant lie he told to the production came frothing to the surface. In a 2020 interview with Page Six, Imperioli revealed that he never informed the show's production team that he couldn't drive, despite the role requiring him to occasionally operate a car in order to drive Tony around. This led to quite the unfortunate gaffe during his first day on set. He said, I didn't tell them because I wanted the job, and in one of the takes I actually back up into a tree and smashed up the back of the Lexus. We all jumped forward, the airbags came out, smoke, it was a big disaster. And I was thinking Gandolfini must be thinking I'm an idiot. This is going to be a disaster, they're going to fire me. And he just looks at me and starts cracking up laughing, and we both just broke down hysterically, and I thought, okay, this is going to be a good ride. That was a bonding moment. Given that it's basically impossible to picture anybody else playing Chris as well as Imperioli did, it's just as well that this little mishap didn't get him axed. Number 8. Danielle Fischel in Boy Meets World Danielle Fischel, of course, played Topanga on Boy Meets World, and on her podcast Pod Meets World recently spoke about fearing the wrath of the show's creator, Michael Jacobs, who made her believe she would be fired after her first day of filming. The issue came down to Fischel's natural speaking speed, which Jacobs deemed too fast, resulting in him growing extremely frustrated and giving her a humiliating chewing out in front of other cast members. According to Fischl, Jacob said to her and her mother, All I know is if you don't come back tomorrow doing this entirely differently, you are also not going to be here. Fearing losing her job, Fischl and her mother stayed up all night going over every line of dialogue as her mother coached her to speak more slowly. It ultimately paid off as Jacobs praised Fischl on set the next day. Fischl added that the incident still affects her to this day, while noting that she was sweating profusely while retelling the story. Number 7. Michael Rosenbaum on Smallville To an entire generation of DC fans, Michael Rosenbaum remains the definitive live-action portrayal of Superman's arch-nemesis Lex Luthor, a part he played so masterfully throughout the CW series Smallville. But in a recent interview with Yahoo, Rosenbaum confirmed that he struggled so much with shooting a physically challenging scene for the show's pilot episode, where Lex crashes his car and almost drives rounds that he expected to be replaced. He said, We shot that in a big tank, huge tank in Vancouver, and I gotta tell you, that was a terrifying moment for me. They put me in a tank 12 feet down in a car with weights on me, and they would bring over my air and I would give them a thumbs up. I get goosebumps, you should see them even thinking about it now. 
Rosenbaum kept having to swim up to the surface of the tank to take a breath and regain his composure, prompting major anxieties in the actor. He believed he was blowing it and would promptly be fired, yet was eventually able to complete the sequence. As for the outcome, he said, That was a special moment. I saw the pilot and I saw what they had put together. I was just like, wow, I'm part of something that's very special for the first time. And indeed, Rosenbaum's Lex was a major part of the show, appearing throughout its first seven seasons and later returning for the series finale. Given the singular stamp he placed on Lex, it would have been a terrible shame if that water-based shoot ruined the gig for him. Number 6. Ellie Kemper in The Office Ellie Kemper began appearing on The Office as Dunder Mifflin's new secretary Erin Hannon in the show's fifth season, with most fans surely assuming she would only be around for a limited single season stint. And Kemper expected the same herself, having originally been contracted for just four episodes at the end of season five. Yet even as her part was extended, Kemper kept fearing the moment she would be let go. She said in an interview with the AV Club, Originally, the character was written for four episodes, and then they kept her around for two more. Then by the end, I was like, it seems they're hinting that this character's going to stay in the show. So I don't really know how it happened, besides extraordinary good luck and timing. I was just waiting for them to be like, and unfortunately, Erin has to go. But there wasn't any hint of that. I guess that's the fear of any sitcom, or any show, that your character will leave. In the same interview, which took place after season six had finished airing, Kemper added that she continued to fear being fired even once her role in the ensemble was firmly regimented. She continued to say, I do still have a fear of getting fired. Even when I had to leave for a funeral, I was like, I shouldn't ask them. I don't want to ask them. I don't want to bring it up. I'm new. Of course, they were, like any human being, very nice and understanding, and they let me go. Ultimately, Kemper ended up sticking around until the show's ninth and final season. That's quite the expanded tenure from a gig originally intended to be just four episodes. Number 5. Will Wheaton in The Big Bang Theory The great Will Wheaton appeared as a fictionalised version of himself on 17 episodes of The Big Bang Theory. And while you might expect a minor recurring role in which an actor plays themselves to be a relatively low-pressure gig, Wheaton sure didn't see it that way. In a 2019 interview with Cleveland.com, Wheaton admitted that his own anxieties caused him to fear being fired from the show, no matter that literally nobody else could have actually played his part. He said, I live with so much anxiety, I tend to be very hard on myself. One of the reasons that I felt so much joy on this show and feel so much sorrow about it coming to an end is that the cast and crew and producers and writers always made me feel like I was a valued part of their group and that I deserved to be there. But because of my anxiety, it took me a while to accept that. After every episode, I was afraid I was going to get fired. It wasn't until this last one that I actually thought, they're not going to hire someone else to play Will Wheaton. By the time I got out of my own way and allowed myself to fully enjoy that experience, the show was over. Number for Nicola Coughlin in Bridgerton. Nicola Coughlin plays the breakout character Penelope Featherington on Bridgerton, yet shortly after being hired for the gig, seemed to suffer from a major bout of imposter syndrome. Despite winning the high-profile acting job, Coughlin lived in fear that she would end up being replaced by a more famous name in the early stages of production. In an interview with the New York Times, she said, I should have been like, this is amazing. Instead, I was like, this is fishy, I don't know about this. I had known plenty of actors who were hired on prestige projects and then fired when the studio demanded a bigger name. Well, that certainly didn't happen in Coughlin's case. Penelope quickly became a fan favourite character during Bridgerton's first season, and she's currently busy shooting season three as one of the leading roles of this storyline. Number three, Craig Ferguson in The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Actor comedian Craig Ferguson began hosting The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson in 2005 and barely two years into the job, feared he might be let go by network CBS after making the bold decision to go off script regarding a monologue he deemed inappropriate. In February 2007, Britney Spears famously shaved her head while in the midst of a mental health crisis, as proved easy fodder for a bevy of less compassionate TV entertainers. And though Ferguson's writer's room had prepared a list of the expected jokes at Spears' expense, he ultimately refused to tell any of them, opting to instead write a deeply personal monologue about Spears' situation. The monologue saw Ferguson flatly declare that he wouldn't be making any jokes about Spears, while speaking about his own struggles with substance abuse and calling for empathy from the mainstream media. 
While Ferguson's speech was well received at the time and has gone viral several times in recent years, he believed it might also result in his being dismissed from a talk show where he was expected to make light of current affairs. He said in a recent interview, I thought at the time that I was giving my resignation monologue, I thought they're going to fire me for this. And actually the opposite happened and everyone seemed to be very happy about it. I never heard anything negative from anybody at the network or production company Worldwide Pants, but I was convinced at the time that I was getting into trouble. Number 2. Amelia Clark in Game of Thrones Amelia Clark gave a star-making performance as Daenerys Targaryen on Game of Thrones, though real life very nearly had other plans, with a grave medical diagnosis prompting Clark to assume that the role would have to be recast. In 2019, Clark revealed that she suffered two brain aneurysms in 2011 and 2013 while in production on the show's earlier seasons. As a result, she expected that she would end up being let go from the series due to her health issues conflicting with its tight production schedule. She said in an interview on Jesse Ware's Table Manners podcast, With the first aneurysm, I couldn't let HBO know what had happened until they knew I wasn't going to die. So it took us three weeks to be like, uh, sorry for not answering the old emails, I've just been a bit, you know. I'm fine, by the way, everything's great, I'm totally fine. I'm going to be back to work, nothing's wrong with me, I'm all good. I just was and consistently so scared of being fired for whatever reason. Clark added that her fear was more a result of her own insecurities than anything she'd heard from the network or producers, yet in the high-pressure, fast-moving world of mega-budget TV, it was certainly an understandable concern. Number 1. Nicholas Lindhurst in Only Fools and Horses Though it's impossible to imagine anyone but Nicholas Lindhurst portraying Rodney Trotter on legendary sitcom Only Fools and Horses, Lindhurst fully expected to be let go from the job while shooting a classic episode from the second series. A Touch of Glass features an iconic closing gag in which a priceless chandelier falls to the floor and smashes, and during a recent BBC retrospective on the show, Lindhurst recalled that it nearly cost him his job. Though the production obviously didn't use a real irreplaceable chandelier for the scene, the replica nevertheless cost around £6,000, and as a result, the production had just a single one made. And so director Ray Butt gave Lindhurst a stern warning, saying, If you laugh when it's dropped, we've lost the end scene. If we've lost the end scene, we've lost the episode. If we've lost the episode, we've lost the series because the BBC will only transmit six. So if you laugh when that drops, I will fire you." Lindhurst added that Butt was looking daggers at him during the shoot, which required him and co-star David Jason to stare at each other in stern silence for 30 seconds after the chandelier dropped. Yet, as it turned out, it was director Butt who struggled to maintain his composure, resorting to stuffing a handkerchief in his own mouth in order to prevent himself from laughing. Understandably, Lindhurst was incredibly relieved when the 30 seconds were up and he didn't blow the take. But little did they know, they'd just created what would become one of the most unforgettable moments in British sitcom history. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.